guys, welcome back to another episode of Imperial Diecast, and today I have another project car of mine here. In the beginning of 2020, I uploaded a review of a 124 scale Ferrari F40 in black, which was one of those old made in Italy Buragos where the rear canopy would open, compared to the re release of the F40 in 124 scale where only the doors open. And it seems you guys liked that video of mine because it has over 2,300 views just a year and a half later. And considering that I have the LaFerrari, the Enzo, and the 288 GTO in 118, it made me think, why not buy a Rosso Corsa Red F40 in 118 as well? Because these are actually beginning to go up in price. If you remember my 288 GTO review that I did a couple of months ago, that feeling of limited availability was the main reason why I picked one up. But I wasn't happy with the default paint job, and I put a lot of work into it to make it look like the real one. And that is what I ended up doing with this Ferrari F40 as well. So I feel like now, apart from the missing windows, it looks more like a high-end F40 and has the same level of detail as Burago's re-release, which sold out quickly. So this model right here is the original 1987 Burago release that I have added extra details to. However, just a few years ago, Burago re-released the F40 in 118 scale in this sort of signature edition boxing, and a review of that has been uploaded by a diecast channel called Ray Photography 27 so shout out to his channel. But if I'm not mistaken, first of all, it was a limited release, so it's not easy to find. And secondly, it had a price tag of almost 80 euros, making it the most expensive MSRP Burago to date. So even back when it was available, I was hesitant to pay that much for a Burago especially one that wasn't a brand new casting. Now don't get me wrong, they really made a lot of improvements to their 1987 mold by first of all giving it a completely brand new shiny and glossy coat of paint, and when doing so they also made sure to spray the interior properly as well, because these old 80s Buragos suffered from notorious underspray issues when it came to interior panels, and on top of that, they painted the black trim around the car, as you see here, which I've done as well. And they also painted the black border for the front and back windshield. They also added more accuracy in the form of removing the big F40 logo from the left of the wing. And they also removed the Ferrari branding on the rear grille and instead put a small Ferrari logo on the top edge, like on the real car. They also painted the carbon fiber tub in black instead of gray. So basically all the improvements I did here on this model, with the addition of the new coat of paint and the proper logo placements. So the F40 is the second of the Ferrari 5, and it was followed by the F50, the Enzo, and the LaFerrari. And to many, including me, this is the ultimate Ferrari. Out of all the Ferraris that were ever made, I still believe this one has the most unforgettably iconic shape. I mean, just look at it. It looks like a race car, doesn't it? It's like one of the most iconic looking cars out there. But why is it called the F40? Well, Ferrari was founded after World War II in 1947. And 40 years later, we had 1987. And for that year, they wanted something to celebrate the 40th anniversary of Ferrari by then. By this time, the founder Enzo Ferrari had become an old man and had seen his life's work almost completed, which was establishing his company as the most famous sports car and race car manufacturer in the world. 
But at the same time, with the popularity of the Testarossa, the 308, and the 328, there had been increasing criticism regarding the latter, in the sense that Ferrari was no longer as much about racing as it was about selling their cars as lifestyle accessories to cocaine dealers in Miami. So he was infuriated by that, and he wanted to deliver once again a race car that would stand the test of time. And development on the F40 had already begun in 1986 when this car's predecessor, the 288 GTO, underwent a facelift in the form of the 288 GTO Evoluzione. But that was exactly the time when the FIA banned Group B due to being too dangerous. So Ferrari didn't quite know what to do with the 288 GTO Evoluzione. And that's when the chief engineer Nicola Matarazzi thought, let's completely redesign it and turn it into a road legal car. And that, my friends, was one of the best decisions that they ever did. Because the 288 GTO is a beautiful car. But the Evoluzione was one ugly pile of metal. Especially from the front and the back. But to me, it's a little bit like the story of the ugly duckling that turns into a beautiful swan here. Because when it was redesigned to become the F40, it actually ended up being an even more iconic and beautiful car than its predecessor, the 288 GTO. They initially thought of only making 400 F40s, but because of demand, 1,315 F40s were manufactured from 1987 to 1992. As well as eight prototypes. Speaking of which, this 118-scale F40 one of the most famous made in Italy Buragos is, in fact, a prototype. That's right, Burago never made the production Ferrari F40 in 118 scale. How can you tell the two apart? By the 22 louvers on the rear canopy instead of 11, and the 5 vents behind the wheel arches instead of just 4. So if you insist on a 118 production F40, the cheapest is Hot Wheels. Otherwise, though, the cars look the same. Now, this is a model that I actually ended up getting for free because I got this from eBay, and the seller did not send me the one that he had shown in the product photos. This one he sent me had a big scratch on the windshield right above the driver's side. The engine cover had a noticeable panel gap when closed. The front Ferrari logo was shredded. And there was some paint bubbling near the passenger side headlight as well. None of which were in his product photos. So I asked him for a partial refund because I would not have bought the model in this state. But that's how I got it for free. So that's nice of him. Let's get started with the review then, shall we? So this is the front of the Ferrari F40, and of course, it is so unique and so iconic, there's no other car that looks like it at the front. Not even any other Ferrari. You'll notice that we have a Ferrari logo right up here in the middle. And this is the replacement logo that I basically had to print from my printer and stick it here. I think the measurements that I used was like... 4 millimeters by 6.5 millimeters. So I just printed it out, and I think it looks pretty decent from a distance at least. And now let's take a look at the fog lamps, because these are the fog lamps, these are not the headlights, and they look really good on this 118 scale Burago. They don't have any pegs. You can see that there's like a separate floodlight and orange indicator. And then we even have these three lines here up front, which are supposed to be defroster lines to prevent the fog light from fogging up. Now what I did was, you can see that I painted a black trim around the fog lights, just like on the real F40. And then further up, we have the actual pop-up headlamps. And the effect that I wanted to give here was that they should look like they're separate pieces, that if you press on them, they will pop up. 
And that's the reason why I painted the black trim around them, because Burago has provided us with a groove here, but of course they had not painted it. And then further down we have these three air vents. Now these are actually perforated air vents, so that's nice. Um, however, they used to be unpainted grey plastic, but I decided to paint them in black to make them look better. As we move on further up, you will notice that we have two NACA ducts here. And these are actually perforated, just like on the 124 scale version of the F40. The Ferrari F40 is known for its plethora of NACA ducts. I mean, we got two here at the front, we have another two at the back, and then we have two on each side. So there's eight in total, and these ones on the side are actually perforated, as you can see the tire right there through them, while they weren't on the 124 scale version. And through these vents you can even see the intake manifold and the individual valve covers that are not visible from the top. And that's because these old Made in Italy Buragos came with fully molded engines that no budget manufacturer does today. Really amazing stuff. And here's a look at the windshield, which doesn't look that good because it is old. And this is the trick that I sort of did to cover up the um, scratch. I just painted the scratch, which was white, in black. So I did that and then I aligned the windshield wiper. So that it kind of looks like an extended version of the windshield wiper because, as you can see, the wiper can actually be moved and then you'd have the scratch right next to it. So if you align it this way, it just looks like a longer wiper, and you can sort of make the scratch almost disappear. So one of the main advantages of the 118 scale Ferrari F40 by Burago over the 124 scale version is that the entire front clamshell can open. This is also an advantage the 118 Burago has over the 118 Tonka Polistil F40. Because on the Tonka, the pop-up headlamps actually pop up, but for that, the front clamshell does not open. But here they don't pop up, but for that, the front clamshell can open. And the cool thing about this Burago is that it actually comes with front clamshell latches. So not only are these separate plastic pieces, but Burago also molded the key lock on them, and all I did was just paint it in silver to make it stand out. And I think it looks amazing. So to open the front clamshell, just like on the real F40, you just grab onto these latches and then you just like pull them apart so that they unlock and then you can open it. So this is basically what the interior of the clamshell looks like. And you can see that we have here a spare tire, a couple of canisters, and then over here you can see the backside of the clamshell and it actually has an aerodynamic purpose because the air that goes into the front vents through here flows through these pipes and cools the brakes of the front wheels. So you can see Burago had provided all the details, but all of these items around the spare wheel were made out of red plastic. But when painted properly, they look great. And there's even a belt to keep the spare wheel secured in its place, and I painted it in brown and the buckle in silver. Okay, let's close this up. And by the way, the Kyosho 118F40, which costs like $500, also has these latches. But on the Kyosho they do not work, as in they're just painted on and not separate pieces with a function like on the Burago here. So even though it is a hassle to open and close them every time, it's nice to see a budget model implement this feature. Something unthinkable today. So here we are at the iconic side profile of the Ferrari F40, and I mean, wow, it just looks so amazing, doesn't it? Thoroughbred race car right here. So this is where you will see the improvements that I did to the car in the form of this black trim that starts at the front. And runs along the entire side of the car and then goes through the back, the other side, and then along the front as well. 
And I think that this black line adds so much character to the car. And Burago had provided us with the groove, they just had not painted it, so it isn't that hard to do. Similarly, I also painted these vents here at the back, as well as the B pillar of the car, which I also painted in black, and then the black trim around the windows. Now let's take a look at some of the details here on the side of the car. So we're going to start off with the door handles, which I painted in silver. Even though on the real car they are not silver, I still think that it just adds a little bit of extra definition to the side of the car. And then down here we have the Pininfarina branding. I painted this area behind the rear vent glass here in black. I could have also painted a black trim around the fuel cap, but it was kind of hard to do, so I left it out. So here you can see the F40 branding on the rear wing. Unfortunately, this is on the wrong side of the car, because on the real F40 it would be on the other side. Now, I'm not sure if on the prototype version of the F40 it really was on the left side or not. And you can see these five vents here. Of course, the black isn't done too well, I have to admit. But um, from a distance, it does give you the impression that they are perforated. And that's kind of the effect that I wanted to have here. Now, this being a Burago, it unfortunately does not have any suspension whatsoever. And then up front here, there's actually a little groove where you can paint the indicator. It's a great side profile, I think. But now let's take a closer look at these aforementioned NACA ducts, because each of these NACA ducts actually has a purpose on the real Ferrari F40. This one is the rear brake cooler. This one feeds one of the two bare intercoolers attached to the engine. And there's actually another duct behind the window up here, and this one is the combustion air supply that feeds one of the two turbochargers. And now let's take a closer look at the rims. Now, I used to be upset that the Burago has no silver center locks on the rims like the Hot Wheels does, but then I realized the real F40 and the Kyosho also have black center locks. So it doesn't look too odd if I leave the black pins visible and don't try to cover them. With that being said, these rims are a lot better looking and definitely an improvement over this car's predecessor, the 288 GTO, which I'll show you in a second. But first, let's take a look at the tires, because you actually get branded tires here. And these are actually Pirelli P0s, 245 by 40 ZR17s, to be more specific. That's kind of cool. The rear tires, though, are 335 by 35 ZR17s. Amazing detail. So here we have the F40's predecessor, the 288 GTO. And you can see that even though both of them have the same pentagram-style rims, they are different. And I think that the ones on the F40 look better. In theory, you could also buy a separate set of these and change the ones on the 288 GTO and make it look even better as well. But yeah, both of them look great next to each other, don't they? And here we are at the back of the Ferrari F40's iconic-looking tail end. And I made some improvements here as well. We're going to start with the Ferrari logo at the center of the rear grille. Now, this is a separate chrome piece. However, it did not have any shading. And just like how I did it on the 124, what I did here on the 118 was use a very thin down black paint. Kind of like a wash. And go over it so that the black paint would basically deposit itself between the letterings. And then I took a damp microfiber cloth and cleaned the residue off the chrome lettering to restore their original shine. And that's how I ended up with a good-looking and properly shaded Ferrari badging here. Again, you will notice the black trim extending underneath the grille, adding more character to the car. 
But now let's take a closer look at the tail lights, because these are separately colored, unlike the 124. However, they were missing the white reverse lights on the interior. So I just used some white paint and painted that, and it's not perfect, but I think that it still looks convincing from a distance. Similarly, I also painted the locks on the latches for the rear engine cover. We have an old Italian license plate saying MO Roma 983, and the triple exhausts are also colored in. Now, if we take a closer look at the rear grille, you can see that Burago, just like on the 124, obviously also paid the same attention to detail on their 118 and provided us with a fully perforated grill mesh. If we move on further up, you will see another new uh, improvement that the 118 F40 has over the 124, and that is in the form of these additional grills here underneath the spoiler, which were omitted on the 124 version, at least on the 1987 version. And you can see through them and into the engine, now the production F40 actually has like three indentations here on the top edge of the spoiler, which Hot Wheels and Kyosho have replicated, but is missing on the Burago prototype. And speaking of the prototype, you can see that the rear canopy of the engine bay cover has 18 louvers, nine on each side to the production car's 11 louvers, where it, there would have been five louvers per side with a single louver down below in the middle. You can also see that I painted the black trim around the glass. So that also looks pretty all right, I think. But now let's get this engine bay open. And in order to do that, you basically have to pry open these rear clamshell latches on both sides to lift the rear engine bay cover. So once you raise the rear engine cover, you'll notice that Burago has actually provided us with a plastic prop rod, which you can then put into this socket here to keep the die-cast engine bay cover open. That's another extra feature on the 118 scale F40 compared to the 124. But now let's take a closer look at the engine. This is the 2.9 liter twin turbo V8, 471 brake horsepower, with Swiss Bayer intercoolers, that's B-E-H-R, which you can see written on the intercoolers. And this engine was capable of accelerating from 0 to 100 in 3.9 seconds. Remember how in the 288 GTO's review I said that it was the first road-going car to break the 300 km per hour barrier? Well, the F40 was the first road-going car to break the 200 miles per hour barrier. So they're both unique in their own ways. This is the original muffler that some F40 owners replaced with a tube exhaust, which was like three smaller tubes extending upward and into the engine for a better sounding exhaust note. Below you can see the transaxle. And then we have these two sideways facing air intakes here. These were also just unpainted plastic, so I painted them black to make them look more realistic. Now let's get this closed up. And now let's check out the Ferrari F40's interior, shall we? But before we do that, let's take a look at this door panel here. The F40 has one of the most bare-bones interiors. And that reflects itself also in the fact that we have this little cord here. And this is actually the car's door handle. You just pull on the cord to shut the door. So it's very bare bones. And now if we take a look at the interior, you will see that I painted not just the footwells in black, but the surrounding carbon fiber tub as well. Because all of this used to be unpainted gray plastic. 
With that being said, the interior of the F40 prototype differs from the production version by a fuse box existing in place of the glove compartment. So that's the weird looking sticker there. Now in the middle of the center console we have three gauges on that sticker and they display the car's engine temperature, pressure and fuel gauge. And below them we have three air vents. On top of them though, you can see that on the dash we have two further air vents and these are actually perforated, whereas on the 124 F40 they were not. And here's a look at the racing seats. They've got sab belt five point harnesses on them and I painted the circular buckles in silver. Nice side bolsterings. So yeah. Nice prototype interior. So now let's check out the driver's side of the Ferrari F40. And the steering wheel suffers from the same problem that a lot of made in Italy Buragos had at the time, which was that the Ferrari Prancing Horse logo was not properly mounted. You can see it's mounted sideways here. Um, behind the steering wheel we have the gauges, speed on the rev, we have chrome stocks, and behind it you can see that we also have some switches, although they're not painted, but they're there. And further below in the footwell we have chrome floor pedals, shift pedal, brake, clutch, and so on, and they do have a nice texture on them as you can see right there. So yeah, it's a bare bones interior, but um, it's decent, I think. And finally, here's a look at the car's undercarriage. You can see that it says Burago Ferrari F40 1987. Scale 1 is to 18, made in Italy. Mine had this weird sticker in German which said that if the seal is damaged or removed, then you can't return this model. <laughs> but yeah, um, if you look at this whole bottom plate here, it isn't painted at all, it's just grey, but at least it has a carbon fiber texture which is missing on the 124 version. And of course here at the back you can actually see through the rear axle and into the engine. So that's kind of nice. And we also have these extra louvers here underneath the rear valance. So there you have it, guys. This was the review of the legendary Ferrari F40 by Burago. An amazing car. And since these are going up in value, I suggest you get one of your own. And with a few extra touches that you add to it, you're going to make it look so much better. If you're interested in more reviews like this, please feel free to watch my review of the 118 scale Ferrari 288 GTO or the 124 version of the F40. Have a great day, take care, and this is Imperial Diecast, signing out.